the shoot you guys were on was for about a week and it was inside Oren's house. What was it like? It was intense, yeah. I mean, we shot, you know, 18 hours a day, pretty much around the clock for the seven days. And, um, and you know, it was really intense, but it was, it was also really fun. I mean, Oren and Mika and I became a really good team. And uh, it was really collaborative. And I think we just, you know, we had a lot of fun working together. Well, was, was it weird sleeping in the house after you doing this film about things that happen at night? Well, we, we slept so, so little that uh, for me it wasn't. Um, so I was just so exhausted whenever we actually did sleep. I think Mika freaked out a little bit more than I did. But, um. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in a lot more danger. Sure, um, yeah. That's true. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize the film's also very funny. So did you guys have a lot of fun making it? Yeah. Blast. It was a blast making it. It was really difficult. It was a long, you know, like like Kay says, like really long hours. And um, it's, it's very um, physically taxing to be scared for so long, so every day for, you know, for a week. But uh, the fun... The fun moments, the lightness, all the humor that we've injected into it, I think is what makes the movie work on, uh, at least that's one of the key parts. Yeah, it was, it was really fun. And even if it was 4.30 in the morning and we had been shooting straight for 10 hours, um, we still had a blast. So I think that's important. Oh, fantastic. And, Mike, you were, a lot, we were um, responsible for a lot of the filming. Was that easy for you or was that... I loved it. I, I had a lot of experience in college, um, creating television shows for, uh, for my campus television station. Mm -hmm. um, so when we were filming, actually, Oren had to tell me to not use the viewfinder and to shake the camera more. Because <laughs> doing all these like slow zooms and fades and, and, and all these, this nice camera workout, getting it so into being the cameraman that he didn't think people would, th would believe it was home video. For my part, I mean, being the cameraman, the actor, the cinematographer, having my music in the film, it was really like... Um, an unbelievable creative experience and uh, something I'm not likely to do again so very very thankful for Oren uh, for letting me be a part of it mm -hmm. I actually got paid a dollar for all of the music rights for all those songs wow so you, you guys are um, rolling it in now yeah yeah well <laughs> we got paid $500 for the initial shoot but Oren is a very generous guy and um, and uh, he's helping all of us out everyone had anything to do with Oh, that's great. And, um, Katie, I know some of your scenes were quite physical. Was it hard to shoot them? No, I mean, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was fun. Uh, it was, I mean, it wasn't without its, its, you know, problems or whatever. And we had to do that scene specifically a number of times and, and, uh, and that kind of thing. But the stunts were really exciting. I mean, they were a lot of fun to film. So, I mean, there may have been a few bumps and bruises, but it was well, it was well worth it. I just want to add to that that, uh, Katie is such a trooper. I mean, she's, so even talking about it now, um, uh, she seems very casual about it, but, but she, at certain points in the shoot, she had massive bruises and rug burn, and, and we, were, we would shoot these highly technical scenes that involved a lot of physical work, and, and she would never complain, even if we were shooting for four hours straight, the same exact scene, and, and um, I was amazed at how much punishment she, she could take, she always keeping a smile on her face, and always staying very enthusiastic, and when you guys auditioned for the role, I read that Oren asked you why you thought the house was haunted, and I was wondering what response you gave. I, I kind of went a Ghostbusters route with it, less 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 demonic haunting and more like Slimer is in my house, and he's leaving all kinds of uh, exoplasmic deposits in places that he shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, uh, that was the focus of the least part of my story. And I, I think I said that... I think I said that... Um, that I remember being home alone and hearing something and uh, walking out and seeing that, you know, that, that uh, the paintings had flown off the walls and whatnot. And, you know, I wasn't sure the house was haunted. I didn't know how else to explain it and that kind of thing. And and that was that was kind of the thesis of my answer. So when you guys were shooting, I believe there was a script, but you were free to improvise. Was that the case? And what was that like? There was no script. <laughs> had a really distinct idea about where he wanted the film to go and he knew what he wanted but he but there wasn't anything there weren't any lines written down everything was uh, every every bit of dialogue was improvised yeah he had, he had an outline of um the the arc of the story and uh different possibilities about how we could do different things and when we shot a scene he would say okay guys let's do this um this is where it's going this is where we're starting this is where we're trying to end up these are the things that we like the the specific points of story exposition that we need to hit 
and uh, just go and see what happens. And we would shoot it, and we would just refine what we did if we needed to. Um, a lot of stuff worked first take. A lot of stuff we had to do uh, multiple times. So you would do this kind of thing again? I, I, ho I mean, I would love to work in that environment again. It's a really unique project and a really specific um, kind of filming. And, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm sure there are other projects that you could get away with that, but um, probably not anytime soon. I was wondering, in your preparation for doing the film, did you guys watch any of the other films? I know uh, Oren's a big fan of Blair Witch. No, I mean, Oren had, I didn't at least, uh, Oren had a lot of uh, research done. He had read up on a lot of things and, uh, you know, and, and shared a lot of that research with us. So there was definitely a lot to catch up on. But, um, but we were really, I mean, our movie is similar to others in a lot of ways, but we weren't set out, we didn't set out to recreate, you know, any of those other movies. So we really just, you know, we knew what we wanted to make and we, and we were very committed to our, our idea of how the film should go and then, and we just stuck with that. So it was, you know, hopefully we made something that was, that was unique. That was what our, you know, one of our goals. And as far as the, uh, the, the research goes, uh, instead of watching other movies about hauntings or that have hauntings in them, he actually asked us to watch uh, documentary footage about real life hauntings and to actually see the people who were experiencing these things so that we weren't kind of imitating you know someone's fictional account we were actually seeing the real people uh, uh, responding to these kinds of things and um, I know it was really important for Orin to please the hardcore horror fans the guys who really know what hauntings are about and know every little aspect so everything everything you see in the film is based on um, something that happened to somebody in real life. And uh, Orin was really good about researching it, and he had us, um, you know, he passed along a lot of that research to us. Well, what, was, what was it work like working with Orin as a first-time director? Oh, it was awesome. He's, you know, he's an incredibly generous guy when it comes to, you know, to being involved with him creatively. You know, he had, he knew what he wanted, he had his vision, but he was so open, so willing to listen to us. I mean, he, we really became this, like, like a little team that worked together very, very well. And, you know, we all trusted each other, and we were all, you know, equal members of this team. And, and you know, he was, I, I, I mean, he was amazing to work with. I would work with him again in a second. Orin, Orin is a, uh, a great guy in a lot of ways. Um, one of them is in how he maintains, like, a um, creative uh, openness to every opinion, and he's willing to listen to everybody about everything. But in the end... Um, he knows what he wants. So it, it's, it's a great contrast between uh, freedom and, and discipline when you work with him. And uh, it, 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 it was amazing. And, uh, yeah, love him. He's a great guy. Oh, cool. Well, you know, being such a, a small project and working so intensely, did you ever expect the film to have the success that it has had? From the beginning, you know, three years ago, when we first premiered at Screen Fest, it was the real horror fans, uh, the, the guys on internet and bloody disgusting and threat central fear net and all the the really hardcore horror fans go to film festivals and see horror movies and have seen everything the, these guys they don't get scared anymore because they have seen everything and for them to come up to us and say this scary scared me oh this this movie scared me a lot and uh i, I don't get scared and that, that was the best thing that could have happened for us and it was those guys back in the beginning who were banging the drums and, and demanding to see the movie and then when finally paramount uh, came up with the demand a campaign and we got a million demands in four days and decided uh, Paramount would release it nationally. Um, it's just, it's been a dream come true and it's all fan driven and we really uh, appreciate the fans and we want to keep in touch with them. So, you know, everyone look us up on Facebook and Twitter mm -hmm. and we want to hear from you guys and especially all the people in Australia because I have a lot of Australian friends and they're all awesome. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, what do you think it was about the film that people identified with so much? You know, I think that it's a movie that it doesn't you rely on jump scares and gore and guts and blood, uh, and, and instead it really is just a kind of quiet fear that kind of seeps in, it taps into your imagination, and uh, and scares you not only in the theater but hopefully you know when you when you go home at night because everybody's been in a relationship and everybody you know has to go home and sleep in their beds, and so the movie in many ways is, is easy to relate to, especially you know if you care about the characters. Um, so I think it's just a, I think it's a more quiet, more intellectual fear. Yeah. Yeah. And I think all of us, not, even though, even as adults, we rationalize why we shouldn't be scared of things, but irrationally and unconsciously, we're still 
scared of the dark on, on some level. 